I like trying to improve holidays. I've made a few videos about that already, and so you may be expecting me to do the same with this video. But no. Actually, the reason I started trying to improve holidays was because of Easter. Because I really, really like Easter. But not this type of Easter. Actually, I really hate this type of Easter. The typical light pastel colors with bunnies and chicks. It just feels paper thin and emotionless. But when I think of Easter, I don't think of that. I don't know how it started, but even as a kid, I've always associated Easter with a more darker, mysterious theme. Halloween is the horror holiday. It's the time to celebrate fear and the scary and stuff like that, with a chance for a creepy and chilling thing to happen. Christmas is like the cozy holiday. It's like for gathering around the fireplace as it snows outside, as you wait for the fat man to climb down your chimney and give you some good stuff. It's the good feels holiday. But then you have Easter, which, I mean, how do you describe it? It's like safe, I guess. It feels like a holiday for kids more. Like plenty of people celebrate Halloween and especially Christmas when they get older and stuff. But with Easter, we well, don't see grown men going around looking for eggs. Easter's a baby holiday, really. At least that's what most uncreative, boring people think of it as. But I've always thought of Easter as the second darkest holiday compared to Halloween. But mostly it's the mysterious holiday. Whenever I see an ad or some Easter related thing, it's always happy, sunny, warm fields and flowers and stuff. And I don't know about you, but where I'm from, it does not look like that at all this time of year. When I think of Easter, I think of a dark, rainy, misty field, similar to what I did in my last video about St. Patrick's Day. But while that had a bigger focus on luck, greenery, and I imagine generally taking place in the daytime, Easter is much darker and can easily slip into nighttime. It's not scary though, just eerie. Okay, so first, let's start with something that should obviously be connected to Easter, yet I feel like you never see people connect them, and that's Easter Island, or Rapa Nui, which of course has these fellows, Moai which actually just means statue, but why the Moai are here or why there are so many of them is a complete mystery. In fact, there are a documented 1,043 complete Moai. I don't know how many of them there would be in total if you added up all the broken bits and chunks and stuff, but like that's a lot. And these aren't just little statues you make in a day. These things can be anywhere from 8 feet tall to over 70. Now, I don't know how, how many of them are over 70, but I know the average height of a Moai is around 13 feet tall. But still, that's that's pretty big, especially when you think about the fact that they had to be moved to where they are. I mean, look at the place that they're in. I doubt there were just big chunks of rocks waiting to be carved into dopey looking heads. No, they, they had to be carved somewhere, then dragged to where they are now. And while how they did that exactly isn't really known, it's thought that it would have been through this technique, by rocking the moai back and forth, which honestly just looks funny to see a moai waddling down the road. I'm definitely going to use this as inspiration. Look at them go. I feel like Easter Island is just a good example for how I imagine Easter should feel. I mean, it's called Easter Island, which if you're wondering, no, it's not a coincidence to call that. The crew that first discovered the island arrived on it on Easter Sunday. Moai just seemed like such an obvious Easter related thing. I don't know why people don't do more stuff with them. We should be putting out little Moai statues each year with little hats. It's a perfect decorating idea. Which I don't think Easter has enough of. There is also something else to Easter Island which fits perfectly into the feel. As with any old ancient mystery that doesn't have a confirmed answer, there's also the possibility that aliens did it. It's thought that aliens could have been responsible for many old ancient things like Stonehenge, the pyramids, and so on. And while I don't really believe that, this kind of mysterious ancient vibe from the stuff is exactly what I'm after. That feeling of what if. This isn't a holiday for horror like Hallow's Eve or a magical fun day like St. Patrick's Day. This is a day for the unknown and to realize how little you know and how many things there are with histories that will never be discovered. I feel like aliens could be a good inclusion to Easter. Maybe not like the aliens themselves, but like the typical flying saucer or UFO. 
Just like how Christmas nights are always shown with a full moon glimmering across the snow, sticking in a UFO could fit nicely into an Easter scene. Also, the first reported evidence of a UFO was this picture from 1952, which is actually not as long ago as I thought it was. I mean, think about it. Someone who's 80 now existed at a time when aliens weren't a thing. Unless aliens did move the Moai, in which case I guess they've been around for a lot longer, but still, the, the alien reporting thing really isn't that old. I think it's important for every holiday to have good colors, and while I've so far been able to decide on some good palettes for Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day, Easter's a tricky one. Of course, I don't want to stray too far away from the source material, but the source material is just pastel colors. And when I say colors, I mean like just colors. It literally doesn't matter what color it is. As long as it's light and cute for the kids, then it's Easter apparently. It could be any color. So, you know what? Screw it. If they want all the colors, then all the colors it'd be. I'm going to turn down the lightness, of course, since pastel is completely unacceptable. And I'm going to have to have a greater focus on blue, since I feel like that's a good mysterious color. But all colors are valid and required. I think it's important to not favor one color in particular. The only exception being blue, which I think can be used more. Those are my rules so far when it comes to colors. Eggs are what I feel are the most important thing to Easter. They're just so fun to work with, and their shape is very iconic. Just like the heart, you can stick it anywhere, and you immediately know it's an egg. And the reason an egg is shaped like that is because it's easier for it to come out, rather than something like a sphere. And if you ever tried bowling with an egg, you'll know it doesn't roll well compared to a ball, which helps it from rolling out of the nest. And if you think it's unlikely for a ball to roll out of a nest because it's all secure and covered around the edges and stuff, look at a pigeon's nest. Yeah, these, these guys would be extinct if eggs were around. And as to why eggs are associated with Easter, it's because eggs represent resurrection because of that whole Jesus, rebirth, something, something, Bible, 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 Bible. I don't really care about that. The point is, eggs are the best looking things in life and should be celebrated more. They're also great for so many different types of food and have so many great vitamins and stuff in them. Just use eggs more. Speaking of eggs, Another thing that really should be associated with Easter are Fabergé eggs. The first Fabergé egg was just a gift that Alexander III gave to his wife in 1885. And as you can see, it wasn't much. But after that, I guess a lot of it got attention because then more were made. And they became well known as a valuable and expensive item, slowly getting more complex and intricate. And while I'm not recommending the Easter Bunny to start giving out Fabergé eggs, I'm sure he's poor enough as it is having to buy all those eggs each year. Unless he doesn't buy them and he lays them. You know what, I don't want to think about that. I, I just mean, I think these would be a great decoration. And it doesn't have to be the real type of Fabergé egg. Just, just like Christmas ornaments, there can be the really expensive ones. And then the cheap dollar store ones that break a day later and are full of lice. I could just see it being nice to have just one or two fancy Fabergé eggs around. I don't know, just an idea. Every Easter, I have a tradition of always making a list of egg ideas, though it's constantly getting harder due to the fact that I really don't want to reuse an idea, but that's also part of the fun of it. You constantly have to be challenging yourself to create new and original ideas. Eggs are also just really fun as a base to work off. They're like a canvas, but roundish. I guess they're more like an oval. Well, no, not oval. Oval was like stretched out on two sides equally. Eggs aren't that, really. Actually, let, let me look this up. Alright, so Google is telling me it's an oval, but that's not true. I, I refuse this answer. There's gotta be a name for it. It keeps telling me it's an oval, but it's, it's not an oval. I'm going to keep looking this up until I find this. Alright, yeah, so it's called an ovoid, not an oval, which apparently comes from the Latin word ovum, which actually just means egg. So ovoid is exactly what an egg shape's called. Never listen to what Google tells you at first, it's almost always wrong. Anyways, the first egg I came up with this year is the top left one, the plush egg, which I kind of thought of, thought of as 
like a tribute to the stereotypical boring plastic Easter theme. This egg basically sums it up in one safe ovoid. Then there's the milk egg. Milk containers can really be used for a lot of different things. I've seen milk cartons as houses, creatures, hats, you name it, a milk carton can fit it. So of course I had to do that for an egg. Then a kind of bunny egg. I realized I didn't talk about some of the normal Easter things in this video, like where the whole bunny things comes from. And well that's mainly because I was so focused on the more mysterious side of Easter. I also just didn't find one concrete answer to it. Like, there's a lot of possibilities why bunnies are associated with Easter, but nothing really that solid. Anyways, then there's the danger egg, which is a remake of an egg from last year, which I just didn't really like, and I felt needed an improvement. Then the platinum Fabergé egg, just a kind of fancy egg, because you always need at least one fancy egg each year. Then the wood egg, the capsule egg, like one of those capsule toys, then the sky egg, then of course there's the jam egg, which if you don't know about the jam thing, well just look through some of my art and you'll figure it out pretty quickly. And that's going to do it for this year. And I'm expecting you to have your Moai ready for next Easter, because seriously that needs to be a tradition.